Globally, billions of tons of solid waste are generated each year and waste management remains a significant challenge. And in 2020, the world produced 2.24 billion tons of solid waste. And this number is projected to rise by 73% to 3.88 billion tons by 2050. Many communities, are particularly in low-income countries, lack access to proper waste management, with over 90% of waste being disposed of in unregulated dumps or through open burning. One viable solution to this problem is generating energy from waste. Modern technologies allow waste to be converted into renewable energy through processes like waste to energy WTE plants. And to discuss further joining me in the studio right now is Pang Sui Lei, the Executive Director of Pamara. I say thank you very much. Uh, firstly, we want to talk about uh, e-waste energy. Probably for the young, for the youth, it's such a um, boring discussion, but we know in the future, this is their future. And maybe you can share with us, help us un understand by explaining the WTE process and what are the key challenges for Malaysia to even access and implement implementing the WTE plans uh, compared to countries where WTE is more established. Well, um, first of all, thank you very much, Nina, for this uh, opportunity to talk rubbish with you this morning. Um, I only have three alphabets for WTE, BMW. BMW, okay. Yeah. Big money wasted. Mm -hmm. right. So the question is not um, what are the challenges and why, why are we considering um, it, but the question, the real question here is why WTE? Mm -hmm. why, why do we actually need WTE? Mm -hmm. um, like you rightfully said, um, the more advanced and more developed countries who have been using WTEs in the last decades or so, they are facing up. They are in, in the process of facing up because they realize it's no longer environmental, environmentally friendly and also effective for, for, for future operations and also continuity of the um, waste management industry. Right? So the, the question is why do why does Malaysia, as a country, wants to have WTE? Mm -hmm. it, 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 there's no practicality in that. There's no efficiency in that. There's no cost sensibility in that. Right? Um, waste to energy, WTE, or you, in, in short, um, is just another sexy name for incinerators. Mm -hmm. right? um, because why the, 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 the occurrence of WTE, the emergence of WTE, is because incinerators are expensive to build and expensive to operate. Um, to operate an incinerator, you are looking at literally burning money mm -hmm. to burn rubbish, right? Because you are buying diesels, fuel, gas, or etc., to run the operations of a incinerator plant. Mm -hmm. And because of that high cost of operating, um, comes the energy part. Time to have to salvage of all this energy, this heat generated, how can we, how can the plant actually now find a downstream revenue out of this? But um, with this WTE, <coughs> how does this help position Malaysia on the global waste management? We are being lobbied for WTE as a country from countries who have WTEs in their place for the longest years. They are already facing out. European countries, um, even like Japan, Korea, they are not look, no longer considering WT as the options, as the alternative for them to manage waste. But they have this technology in place and they are trying to sell it to developing countries, mm -hmm. not just Malaysia, and even less developed, developed countries than Malaysia because they want to sell that technology of theirs. In, the context, in other contexts, they say it's a knowledge transfer, but it's actually we have to buy something that is archaic, mm -hmm. outdated, and proven is not sustainable and also effective for the environment. Right. And public sentiments towards WTE mm. plan has been mixed due to concerns of health, environmental impact and safety, especially on the potential air pollution from incineration. So how can Malaysia mitigate all this risk while ensuring uh, WTE remain a sustainable solution? WTE cannot be sustainable. Mm -hmm. It will not be sustainable, especially in the context of not just Malaysia, ASEAN, uh, except for Singapore, who are very strict and very regimented in how they manage their waste. Even that, Singapore can do this because they are, they are rich. They have money to burn mm -hmm. and to do whatever they do with their incinerator plants and their waste to energy plants. Um, in the context of Malaysia, I do not think we should look at incinerators or 
WTE. Mm -hmm. They are much, it, according to WHO in an article published by WHO, the most preferred approach towards waste management is just, it's actually treatment, eliminations, and also solving it at source or as near as source. Mm -hmm. So imagine all large communities, facilities, even like Astro, mm -hmm. as a big, big building, has a solution that treats that source. Instead of accumulating, store, and relocate to someone else. Mm -hmm. right? And eventually, is the landfill or, uh, or a dump site or a open burning situations. See, we like to call it the waste management system all around the world. All right? You put your garbage outside, the garbage truck come and collect, the local council or private contractor collects it, bring it to a transfer station, do some articulation, pack it, and then send it to the final destination, which is landfill. I call it the waste relocation and hiding system. Mm -hmm. Because essentially, there's no treatment, there's no elimination, there's no destroying of the garbage that is being accumulated. Okay. Right? The most preferred way to actually manage garbage is treat at source, if not as near as it could be at source. And that, that approach is not something new. It has been practiced by our ancestor centuries ago. It's just that there was no equipment or technology that can do it effectively and also environmentally friendly. You balik kampung, mm -hmm. all right? Hari raya, mm -hmm. multi families come back, all right? You have kenduri, etc., etc., and then you have this garbage. What do you do? They sweep everything, pop, burn, mm -hmm. right? Or, or they dig a hole behind the house in rumah kampung, and mm -hmm. dig a hole in the house. You just bury it. That's it. You see, that is treatment at source in the in during our ancestors' time, but that cannot continue because it's not environmental friendly because if there's 100 kampung house being doing open burning you will get whole tons of smoke flying around but essentially you know by doing that there's no waste being relocated mm -hmm. hidden somewhere or ending up in the river or the oceans there's no soil or forest being destroyed there's no soil being contaminated mm -hmm. right? everything is kept pristine but in a, within our house then we have these issues now imagine there's an equipment, 100% made in Malaysia, can do this effectively, in the most practical way, clean, safe, and environmentally friendly. Mm -hmm. We can turn waste just into ash, right? making waste disappear. Imagine all the garbage that is, con that is generated from this astro building, from the offices, from the cafeteria, from the pantries, etc., and you bring it to a, where the equipment is being stored then that waste that you have generated, that you have consumed, the paper cups, the plastic bottles, the wrapping, etc., food waste, may disappear mm -hmm. into ash form that is inert, non-contaminated, non-pollutant, which can be repurposed as conduct, um, construction fillers or soil conditioners. Mm -hmm. And we want to make sure this has a long-term effect for the, our environments, but how can all of these changes transition, especially from landfills to WT solutions, mm -hmm. and help particularly in terms of uh, job creations, cost saving, and economic viability for governments and even for consumers? See, the, the whole approach for um, any problems, and in this particular waste management, waste issues, it cannot be one size fits all kind of solutions. Mm -hmm. It has to be a, 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 a clever combination of multiple uh, latitude of solutions. Um, and WTE, incinerator, etc. A lot of times, government or experts they are looking at engineering solutions, right? But it's not just about engineering. There has to be social solution. There has to be educational solution. There has to be um, psychological solutions combined with technology or, and, or, or, or science to solve a long-term problem sustainably and effectively. i give you an example. You get on a train, you go to a train station, you want to wait, you want to get from point A to point B, right? So you using that public transportation, you want to be from, you want to go from point A to point B timely. Mm -hmm. All right. Now, the service provider is going to use that as the KPI 
to deliver their service level. So they're going to spend a lot of money to make sure that there are enough trains, the train system is robust to make sure that passengers get from A to B. But in doing that, it costs billions. Let's say our RRT system, our ART, RRT station or our KTM system, there will be billions for that. Mm -hmm. But if I can tell you psychological solutions that you can get from point A to point B exactly 38 minutes and the waiting time is 5 minutes and every minute when the, tri the, the train is going to be arriving, uh, I give you an update, 4 minutes to go, 3 minutes to arrive, 2 minutes to arrive, 1 minute to arrive. You as a passenger that waits, you wait without anxiety and with certainty that you will know that you will arrive at B in this particular given time. Mm -hmm. Instead of spending billions trying to get from A to B really quick, because how fast can we go in this advanced, techno advanced um, modern life that we really have? Mm -hmm. It's all about, it's just like you having your grab. You don't mind waiting six minutes mm -hmm. for a grab to arrive because you know in six minutes the grab will arrive because there's an update, five minutes, four minutes, three minutes, two minutes, there you arrive. That certainty gives you no issues of waiting. It's just that when we are waiting without certainty, then we have that anxiety. Then comes the service level, customer satisfaction index. So when it comes to waste management, it's not just technology that we put there. The public have to be educated. The public have to reach out and collaborate with government together to actually solve a problem for us in this generation and for generations to come. Um, Mr. Pang, this less than one minute, but I really mm. want to ask you this. As WT Technologies mm. uh, develops, and do you see it evolves to where uh, it will replace entirely the landfills, WTE, or can it coexist uh, for the long term? Yes and no. Mm -hmm. Because, like I said, there's no one size fits all. It has a combination of uh, application in different market, different social economy standard, um, different logistic geographical challenge terrain as well. So it's not one size fits all. A, a small country can't afford a WTE. A richer country will have can do WT, but again, the question goes back, is it safe, is it efficient, is it environmentally friendly? Uh, and to set up a WTE plant, you're looking at destroying about 20 to 30 acres of land, which can actually keep, be kept pristine. And this place, after it post commissioning, right, decommissioning, it's rendered no use as, an, as a dead zone in that particular area. And definitely, with all of our discussion here uh, with Mr. Pang, the Executive Director of Pamarai, we want to make sure that uh, Malaysia can ensure that <coughs> WT complements the recycling efforts, not detracting from them. Mm -hmm. And definitely, all of our discussion here, Mr. Wong will be featured in astrowani.com and across all social media. Again, I will say thank you very much. And I thank hope you, we have, can have a future discussion about uh, e-waste management, definitely. And that's it for Niagawani. I'm Nina Rosman. Catch you on the next one.